Hey guys, welcome back to The Neighborhood. It's your friendly neighborhood reviewer with Intuit Reviews. Today's video features the Denon PMA 1600NE. This is 140 watts into 4 ohms, 70 watts into 8 ohms, 2 channel driven stereo amplifier from Denon, and it's a beast. So let's get into it. The Denon PMA 1600NE is an integrated stereo amplifier. What does that mean? Well, that means that it has a preamp, an amplifier, and other input functions built into the case. In this case, a built-in DAC, phono stage, and other unbalanced analog inputs for other devices. It is also a relatively powerful unit, capable of driving high current loads. Denon's advanced ultra high current MOS technology claims that it balances high output power with delicate musical details, and for the most part, I'd agree with that. In terms of the specifics regarding the DAC, I could not find much specific information other than the DAC is built in for the US version, utilizing advanced AL32 processing plus, whatever that means, and supports 32384 PCM and DSD up to 11.2 MHz via USB. It also supports 24192 PCM via optical and coaxial inputs. The European version of this device lists the PCM1795 as its DAC chip, but I could not verify that this is the DAC chip that is used in the US version. The USB connection is also supposed to have a digital isolator to eliminate adverse effects due to high frequency USB noise. While this sounds impressive, I will come out and let you know that the DAC is the Achilles heel of this unit. It is simply not very good. It was lean sounding, lacked bass presence, and was bright leaning. Luckily, it's not completely useless because Denon has included a two-band equalizer with a right and left balance function as well. In the end, I was able to get enough woman tone from this unit by raising the bass a bit and lowering the treble a little more than a hair. The 1600NE is also equipped with a source direct mode that basically cuts out the EQ and supposedly eliminates high frequency interference from components which utilize this built-in circuitry. However, I could not really discern any real difference from using this feature or not with most sources. But what I will say is that the soundstage did seem to open up a bit with Source Direct, while the presentation was somewhat restricted without it. The Denon also features an analog mode, which removes the digital circuitry entirely from the signal path including the digital display, eliminating any potential impact of this circuit on the analog section of the amp, allowing the amp to operate as purely an analog device. You would use this if you want to understand the true impact of your DAC or another source on your amplifier. The front of the unit has a nice large volume knob that looks machined and turns fluidly as all knobs on this unit actually do. A cool feature of the volume knob is that the volume knob itself rotates via a mechanical function while adjusting the volume with the remote. This does make a small bit of noise, but could barely be noticed overall. Another thing I will point out is that the EQ knobs are very sensitive, and turning these knobs altered the presentation like a hair trigger. As a result, I would suggest making extreme micro adjustments to your unit and then leaving it alone from there, rather than adjusting it fluidly depending on the track, as this might lead to insanity by the user in trying to reclaim your EQ settings later on. Furthermore, it was unfortunate that the EQ presentation was not adjustable through the remote, as this would have made for a feature that was more user friendly but just about everything else was accessible through the remote functionality. The remote is also functional with other devices in this series, such as the matching SACD player and DAC. 
The back of the unit has inputs for your digital and analog sources, including two optical connections, a coaxial connection, a USB-B connection for the built-in DAC, an IR control in and output, a recorder in and out, an analog connection for a network player, an RCA connection for a CD player, and a phono connector with a ground. There are also two sets of speaker inputs for both main inputs and by wiring if your particular speakers need that. Going back to the phono stage, the Denon is capable of handling both moving magnet and moving coil phono cartridges. I was ultimately only able to test the moving magnet portion, but I found that the phono stage was extremely capable and probably the best part of this unit. Sound was balanced, smooth, crisp and airy, with good directionality to it. Bass and treble extension was good, and never venturing into muddy or harsh territory. The unit also tended to be rather neutral and balanced when using an external DAC, and it really brought out the flavor and capabilities of whatever in particular DAC was connected to it, rather than the amp section of the din and flavoring the sound. I found that in the affordable range, I really enjoyed the presentation of this unit with a topping D30. The bass was strong and coherent, unlike the built-in DAC, and the top end was smooth and not too bright. Again, unlike the built-in DAC, which was somewhat thin and piercing on top. The unit also played well with my Gold Note DS10 as the DAC or streamer, providing what I call Gold Note transparent honey to the tones of this thing. In general, I found that the Denon generally exposed the scalability of most DACs, sounding best with DACs that tend to scale, rather than those that have a certain ceiling with regard to their capabilities. DACs that I enjoy in other scenarios, such as the SMSL SU8, iFi Zen DAC, and iFi One Nano, were rather pedestrian in comparison. But then again, it is also possible that these DACs were just a bad match for this amplifier whereas the others were exceptional. In general, I would say that the Denon 6000NE offers a neutral sound signature with enough power to boot. It has good resolution and detail capabilities with more than sufficient treble and bass extensions. I'm not sure what the dampening factor on this unit is, because I could not find it actually specced out, but it did do an excellent job of controlling the woofer on my Gershman Acoustic Studio 2 bookshelf monitors. The bass dug really deep, and it was tight and resolving at the same time. This amplifier as a whole produced a rather clinical sound with my Studio 2, which was somewhat surprising as I did not expect this from a Gershman speaker. As a result, I elected to continue my search for a better matched amplifier, and I have settled on the Gold Note PA-10 to power my Studio 2s instead. I'll talk more in depth about my Gold Notes in future reviews, but in general for now, I will say that the PA-10 is still rather neutral, like the Denon, but more natural sounding and more musical in its presentation. Additionally, vinyl is not my main method for consuming music, which would be my only real motivation for keeping this integrated if I were to do so, as this is where the strength of this unit really lied. Ultimately, I felt better served by my Gold Note DS-10 and PA-10 combination which is admittedly aimed at the streaming crowd and digital users. Having said that, I toyed with the idea of keeping this unit for future reviews, given its power handling capabilities, revealing presentation, sonic range, and neutrality. But nevertheless, I have decided to let go of this unit and pass it on to someone else. And just a reminder guys, we're getting close to the thousand subscriber mark, so make sure to hit subscribe, comment on this video, give it a thumbs up, and consider following the channel at other neighborhood access locations, such as Twitter, Discord, the blog, Instagram, or become a Patreon. The Patreon is only $1.50 a month, and it really helps the channel out and shows your support. What you get by becoming a Patreon is early access to written reviews from me. And with that consideration, I'm out for now.